name is Sarah Kotwasser. I'm the artist in residence and art program supervisor with Keswick's Wise and Well Center for Healthy Living in Baltimore, Maryland. And today, we're going to make something in my home studio. Today, we're going to be making artist trading cards. Artist trading cards are very cool, small art objects that anyone can make. It's super fun. What's really cool about artist trading cards is that it involves creating something and then swapping it with someone else so that you can collect their artwork as well. So it's a wonderful way to collect other people's artwork or just build a, a collection of cool things that you like. Before we get into what materials we're gonna use, which could be anything really, I wanna talk about artist trading cards in a little bit more detail so you get a full sense of what they are and where they come from. So let's get started. So what are artist trading cards? We're gonna get into that right now. Artist trading cards are miniature pieces of art that are traded around the world. Artists create, trade, and collect art organized at swaps and events, either in person or online. The only official rule is that they have to be two and a half by three and a half inches. How did the movement start? In 1997, an artist named Sternemann, a Swiss artist, created 1,200 cards by hand as part of an exhibition. On the last day, he invited others to create their own cards and trade with him during the closing reception. The movement took off. And today, there are artist trading card swaps in almost every major city around the world, and there are also many online swaps. How do I create an artist trading card? Most swaps are open to any media, materials, or techniques, as long as the card fits into a standard trading card sleeve. Artist trading cards are traded, not sold. However, there are some artists who choose to sell their cards, and those are called additions and originals. How do you trade cards? Well, you can locate an in-person swap in your area, find an online swap, or organize your own swap. There are a number of websites that others have created to help artists get started. They can be found by doing an online search. What's great about artist trading cards is that they can be simple or complex, whatever you like. The size is small, so they're not too intimidating to work on. They're a great place to express yourself. You can try anything. There are excellent places to experiment with new techniques, and they're perfect for sharing. Here are some examples of artist trading cards from Collage Magazine. You can see that some of them are drawn, some of them are painted, and some of them are collaged. Here's some more. You can do anything, really. You can try anything that your heart desires. If you're going for a theme, you can work under that theme. All right. So now that we know a little bit more about artist trading cards, we can get started. As was stated in the previous bit of information, you can really use any materials as long as something fits into a sleeve. So you don't have to use the same materials as me, but the materials I'm going to use include a ruler. This is so I can measure out the appropriate size for the trading cards. A pencil. Any pencil will work. I'm going to be using scissors to cut out the trading cards. You can use cardstock, but I'm using a manila folder because I have a ton of those. Here's an example of the cardstock or manila folder cut out. I'm going to be using a palette today because I'm going to be using a lot of different paints. And paint brushes. I'm going to have some napkins on hand too just to stay clean. I'm using some collage paper. This is for scrapbooking. I also have my Posca paint pins, those are pretty handy. For collage, I'm going to be using a regular old magazine, not for the gossip, but to use the photos. I'm also going to be using paint. I have a metallic blue here, some pinks and some yellows and kind of a beige color. And of course some gloss medium. I like my cards to be a little bit shiny. I also have some liquid watercolor here. We haven't seen this on the channel yet, but I'm gonna do a tutorial soon on how to use it. And uh, some spray ink. So I'm gonna start by measuring out three and a half inches by two and a half inches. I'm measuring the three and a half inches on the vertical on my manila folder cardstock, and I'm just making little hatch marks and then drawing lines of where that three and a half inches are before I move on to doing the horizontal lines of two and a half inches. Once I've got that all drawn out, I'm going to cut it out. And this is going to make the perfect shape for my trading cards. Super easy, super fast. There we go. We got our cards. So I've cut out about nine cards here, but I think I'm only going to make six for this project. And today I'm going to do the theme of summer. 
I'm gonna begin by just spraying some background with my spray ink. So I've started with the blue, and then I'm gonna hit it with kind of a lime light green. I like to, for my trading cards, do a, a kind of a common color palette. So even if each card is different, they're using similar colors. So you'll see that throughout my process today, the, the quality of color and repetition of color that I'm using throughout uh, the process. Now, for the next part of the video, instead of doing a step-by-step -step tutorial about each little card, I'm just going to show you the process through time-lapse so you can see what it's like to make a whole series. All right, so the artist trading cards are done. I have my boardwalk themed card and my ocean storm themed card and then my large wave that's inspired by Japanese printmaking. 
And of course, I always go on road trips during the summer. I go to a lot of picnics with a lot of fresh fruit. And I love baseball. I love to go to baseball games during the summer. So we're done. But not totally done. Before we totally finish, we need to do something on the back of the cards. It's important when you do artist trading cards to sign the back and add some information. So you can see here that I'm signing the back. And I'll go over the specifics of everything I added in just a second. Now, you see that I've signed my name right here at the top. And then I've said that this is an artist trading card and the theme is summer. And I made it in May of 2020 and that it's an edition one of six so each card will get uh, a number two of six three of six four of six and then they're done uh, artist trading cards aren't usually made alone which is to say this whole process is about sharing and trading and while during the pandemic it's not easy to swap during the swap portion of artist trading cards uh, these cards weren't made by themselves today uh, so serena show us what you did Hey guys, it's Serena. This is my first time ever doing anything related to artist trading cards. So I thought I'd show you quickly what I did and what supplies I did. Everything I just grabbed here out of kind of leftover arts and crafts supplies that we had at the house. So um, just have some pretty colored stock paper. These were actually scrap pieces that I cut into the size of a traditional playing card. Uh, this piece here was really, really neat. Uh, the girls and I watched Sarah's paper marbling video and actually paper marbled some stationery. And so I cut up a piece of that to use as the background for one of my cards. I also needed glue, some like Japanese washi tape. I had some fun little spring or spring summer stickers since our theme was summer. I got these out of the the dollar bin at Target, I don't know, a long, long time ago, but they're summer themed, a starfish and some anchors. I thought they were super cute. Um, needed some markers. And then um, I had a couple of fun little stamps. This one's a mermaid. Um, I love mermaids and that's so quintessential summer for me. And some pretty little colored stamp pads. That's it. I just then had to channel my inner Sarah and be creative. So I'll show you what I came up with. So this is my first card, little flowers and the sun. This one's my favorite. So I used that paper marbling paper and I used these gold iridescent, uh, the stamp pad with my mermaids to create this card. This one's super fun. Then I cut up the gift tag and went online and just kind of traced a stencil um, of a wave here and then I took a wadded up piece of paper towel and stuck it on my stamp um, pad and just kind of created the marbling effect on this one. And my last one here was cutting up another piece of those gift tags and just some markers and glue to create this one. So um, y'all definitely need to join Artist Trading Cards. If I can do it, you can do it. And it really was a fun little creative outlet. So give it a shot, y'all. Bye. Major thanks to Serena. It was really cool to see what you made and uh, also interesting to see the commonalities in our approach to the theme of summer and then our differences. So uh, I hope that you enjoyed watching this video today and learning about the form, history, and structure of artist trading cards. We're going to be hosting a Zoom class on artist trading cards starting next week and uh, we're hoping that uh, members who sign up enjoy it. So. I hope you enjoyed learning about artist trading cards today, and I also hope that you have a wonderful day. Bye!